What up my freaks, Ruina Sensei here with part 46 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Archeon the Everchosen Immortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, Valkyrie the Bloody has taken Lothurn and Ulthuan, while not quite destroyed, is very much on the way down. Do have a few territories to take left, or to left to take here, uh, but uh, we should be able to finish up on the island slash the donut right quick. In addition to that, we got a very nice sort of final battle for Mr. Glugmere Humongous here. Next turn, he will be replaced by Festus, adding the last of the Chaos Pokemon men to the uh, uh, to the roster but he did a good job especially that last battle against the Red Duke now in terms of this time we have got a few battles that we still have to fight uh, Nervegicus the censor bearer who has done such a fantastic job is only one level away uh, from getting his uh, demon princehood so hopefully by taking both of these armies out and we can do that and there are two of them here and we know that King Anlashen cannot run so hopefully we can force the fight uh, might even be better if we specifically target target him rather than uh, this little army as it'll be forced to move in to reinforce so in fact let's uh, let's do that uh you are going to need to go into march stance just to get close enough like so and then we'll have Norg Vegicus to go here. It'll mean we'll probably have to suffer attrition next turn, but oh uh, well. And also might mean that we get attacked by further armies here next turn, but uh, well, I suppose we can expect that anyway. Anyway, anyway, we gotta do this, and on top of that, we still have to take out uh, the uh, Grimfang Spider Killer Orc Endgame Army with the Nerath Magath and our monstrous stack. Not a complete monstrous stack as yet, but we are working on it, and we do have reinforcements coming in to uh, help it out with these guys. Uh, though we are still losing about 12k per turn, I think at this point it hardly matters. Anyway, let's begin on this. I really would like to devolve you into demonhood, so we're gonna hit Mr. King Anlishin here. I mean, tactically it would probably be better to hit this guy as then this army would then be forced to reinforce, but I'd rather not risk them running away and not being able to fight both at the same time. Plus, we still have artillery superiority in our uh, uh, quite strong now Soul Grinders of Nurgle. Away they go. Alrighty, here we go. We begin the bombardment on the enemy army with Norvegicus, and uh, hopefully since he's level 19, should we win this, we rack up an FXP to uh, uh, to finally evolve him. Now, uh, the enemy is going to have a little bit of trouble here, as the bombardment we've already seen is pretty darn effective uh, from our uh, piles of soul grinders, and uh, a little bit of help from our play club catapults who are nicely positioned all over the uh, uh, crest of that hill are uh, going to help out decently as well. We're also going to pop the chaos spawn as soon as the enemy is damaged enough uh, to allow us to do so and then send all the chaos spawn at the casket of souls. I don't know how likely they are to destroy it but it is a fragile unit A and B it can't fire while being attacked by these frenzied monstrosities so uh, certainly should work out well for us. Now we did Vanguard deploy, that's the word. Uh, Vanguard deploy our Hounds of uh, Decay behind the enemy lines. There's a lot of chariots to destroy and enemy artillery pieces and such to annoy as well. Though by the looks of it, we're going to be better off at least damaging, if not outright destroying those artillery pieces, or at least some of them, with our own artillery. Just because our units of doggos will take a little bit of extra time to get here, and so we'll want to react in this manner. 
Looks like the enemy reinforcements are arriving on the field of the balance of power has shifted to about even and they've certainly taken damage. The doggos have finally found themselves some chariots to chew on and these doggos are pretty darn and nasty. 55 physical resistance or 55% and the chariots certainly are of no threat whatsoever to them. The Screaming Skull catapults are overrun and the doggos will instead hit those who shot you with great bow. It also does look like the Casket of Souls will be going down as the anime is unable to do enough about the uh, uh, the summoned Chaos Spawn, which really worked out well here. Well done to the Chaos Spawn. Of course, you will be sacrificed upon the Altar of Chaos, but well, that's what you've been made for. Now, unfortunately for us, there is a second Casket of Souls that has arrived on the field from this army. I didn't actually check that, and I very well should have. Definitely a uh, gaff on my part. So we're going to have to send some units towards it. Now, that'll be our Chaos Sorcerer, our second Chaos Chaos Sorcerer and our Exalted Hero and both of them are gonna head towards that thing We're gonna pop a, a Spirit Leech Overcast on it uh, from a distance and hopefully destroy it or otherwise smack it around a little bit There's the uh, no, that's Doom and Darkness after the Spirit Leech in the hopes of uh, forcing it to crumble It doesn't have any spell resistance interestingly enough. So the uh, ability to spam the uh, Spirit Leeches from a distance should actually be fairly effective at it should we need to do so again in the future now, a few of the enemy, or not range units, cavalry units have managed to get past our uh, our lines there and our doggos and are moving on in, so we are going to react to them as well. Now, you may have noticed that our lines of infantry weren't deployed here. All the line of infantry and both of our units of the... Uh, the rattling guns they were deployed here behind this hill the reason for this was that since the enemy had a lot of artillery of their own we didn't want them targeting either our infantry or our extremely fragile rattling guns so they hid behind the hill where the enemy could not see them and the enemy was forced to target other things that weren't nearly as vulnerable to their artillery fire norvega ain't losing at this point not when he's so close to his, uh, uh, to his evolution. And there we go, we got a decent pile of our soul grinders all being healed up by our uh, war shrines of Nurgle, of course. Sort of acting as the main line, the doggos continue to work in the background as well, and we've also managed to summon that uh, other unit out of the Forsaken onto the field, who then can hopefully distract that Tomb Scorpion and prevent it from joining the fray against our poison doggos who have done a great job and have nearly destroyed these Ushabti with great bow. Between the artillery and the Hounds of Decay, the first non-reinforcing army got absolutely destroyed. Very, very effective. Uh, looks like uh, the enemy did manage to get a chariot to charge into the Grandfather's Finest, unfortunately, but uh, they only managed to kill off one rat so far. I guess technically it's two rats because there's two rats per crew, but... Uh, Oh well, only one model destroyed so far. And we can send in our Chaos Warriors of uh, Nurgle, who once again do look pretty darn great. Simple, but great. And to see those chariots off. And the Doom and Darkness upgraded will force them to lose leadership quickly and begin to crumble away as well. Otherwise, our main line is very much holding the Soul Grinders now reinforced and by the piles of Chaos Warriors. And though the anti-large sepulchral stalkers are arrayed against them, or are still arrayed against them as they've been fighting for a while, I don't imagine they have too much of a chance here. We do have a healing aplenty from both our spells and the war shrines. Plus, we just keep popping pestilent miasmas on the enemy and reducing their melee attack. Alright, they begin to crumble. In fact, the balance of power is at about 90% in our favor now and not much left in the way of strength from the enemy. They do pop a, a tomb swarm upon us, which almost looks like a, a Nurglite ability. I mean, we have a blight swarm of our own, in fact. We, they have Tomb Swarm, we have Blight Swarm, but I guess our Swarm is superior this time around. Now, the Rattling Guns are the only ones who really haven't done anything in this particular battle. Zero dam- okay, 142 damage, zero kills, but we did hide them for most of the battle. And you know what? It worked out well. 
and worked out well, as otherwise they would have most definitely been targeted. Also, this Tomb Scorpion uh, was uh, able to achieve absolutely nothing due to the Chaos Spawn and the Forsaken working against it. Very, very nice. It looks like the enemy main lines, or at least those units that have reached our own main lines, have broken, and now it's just a matter of destroying what remains with artillery fire. There we go. Plague Claw Catapults and Soul Grinders. Obviously the remnants of these Tomb Guards. Is this just one Tomb Guard left? And he crumbles away. Oh, poor fella. Alright, and now the enemy lord stands alone against all this artillery fire, but, uh, well, we're gonna let the rats come out and play. There we go. Completely unnecessary, but uh, they haven't. Uh, they didn't get their chance to have any fun this time around. Now the enemy lord did take about half damage through that first volley. Here comes the second, and I don't imagine he'll survive a third. Yeah, about 15% HP remaining now, and a couple more hits, and this should be the last as he gets destroyed and his mount brought down in a hail of warp stone infused gunfire. Uh, oh, there's another little tiny unit of Tomb Guard back here. I think this one was basically just dodging artillery fire this entire time, sort of moving back and forth, doing the dance, and uh, thus not even trying to approach our lines. So it's kind of a mistake on its part, as, well, a lot of units should have been doing that, or a lot of units should have been approaching us at the same time. Otherwise, they fell to the whole divide and conquer thing. Got some Ushapti on the field, and well, 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 we got a little bit more work for our rattlings as well. I just doubt that the enemy are going to reach us, though our soul grinders are basically out of ammunition now. I think that's the first time we've seen that. Good job, soul grinders. And they went into melee, they used all their range attacks. Very efficient, I should say. And as usual, a fantastic performance from Norvigica and his army, including the Rat Heretics. Alrighty, very nice, and Norvegicus certainly has not lost his edge here, as we were able to do this without too much in the way of lost it, or should I say hasn't lost its edge, as we finally reached level 20 and it's time to reward this army. We threw it into the deep end and after battle after battle after battle of it nearly dying, it did manage to survive. Uh, we're going to, I guess, kill captives just in case. Then, are we able to switch you to any stances? Uh, I could put you into raiding to heal up a little bit while you stick around. And I guess you cannot go into a stance, but we don't really care about you. You're just there to help out. All right. Uh, bronze armor of Jurak, a chaos chariot. No, 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 uh, back to Chaos Steed for you, and you do have stench, stench Ridden and Chaos Strategist, which is all great. I guess another point in training wouldn't go amiss. Uh, we could go past on Perseverance, but frankly it's not so useful on the Exalted Heroes of Nurgle, mostly because they are already super tanky. I'm inclined to say enemy leadership reduction for characters, I guess this will at least... Ooh, or should we go into Retinue Physician? And a seemed combatant, considering this army is always getting attacked, maybe the bonus armor piercing damage would be helpful here. Alright, but either way, it doesn't change the fact that we get our first ascension. Sadly, we will be losing regeneration, most likely, but hopefully we get some not too bad. Ah, there we go, and a Baron Air Rune Smashing. No, 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 no. I, huh, I wish they didn't change names. Norvegicus the Sensor Bearer. Ah. Babearer. Uh, sensor Bearer. There we go. That was roughly it, and there we go, our first uh, demon prince, looking pretty great. Uh, yeah, sad to lose all those levels, but what can you do? It'll be worth our time. Now, the buffs that he gets will mostly be for the... Uh, 
uh, for units we don't have in the form of the Plague Bearers, but that's okay. We got other good stuff in here as well. Plus, it makes the Lord quite strong. Uh, we definitely want Children of Nurgle here. And Curse of the Leper. We keep Miasma of Pestilence, but funnily enough, we lose the... Uh, we lose... Stream of Corruption... What do we have here? Fleshy Abundance. Oh, okay, we keep Fleshy Abundance, but we get Purple Sun, which instead of uh, Blight Boil. Purple Sun is terrible compared to Blight Boil. So funnily enough, uh, they're worse in terms of being sorcerers, uh, but they're much stronger in terms of, well, individual characters. It's going to be a while before we uh, rank back up to level 18 for all this good stuff, though. Just double-checking here, and you're rank 16 for that Locus of Virulence, which we already did have on that hero. Anyway, we'll want Hearts of Iron, we'll want Dominating Presence, and then Root Marcher, and we'll probably immediately want to get into uh, Chaos Vanguard. Alright, not going to be too much casting for a little while, and this army will be a little bit of a weaker due to the losses of the buffs in the army, but... It should level reasonably quick, so hopefully we'll be fine. Anyway, that is not the only battle that we gotta do right now, and probably not the only battle that we gotta work for the win, as you, sir. And Aerith Magath are gonna go after Mr. Grimfang. There isn't really anything else to do this uh, this turn other than fight, so fight we shall. And Valiant defeat, you say? Interesting, interesting. I mean, our trolls with their 40 leadership are bound to rout, but we got things with a little better, a little bit better in terms of stats and stuff. Oh wow, the chaos. The Armored Chaos Trolls don't have much more leadership than that either. Yeah, we're really going to need War Shrines in here. I mean, we already have one. I may want to do another. I have to double check whether the other war shrines, any of the other war shrines, give any additional buffs to leadership, as obviously if we're going to make this our troll army, we don't want it constantly routing. Uh, what we do want is, I guess, to put terror on, let's say you, Exalted Hero of Nurgle, since you don't have fear or terror by yourself, and otherwise we're good to go. Go. All right, here we go, our monstrous army, not quite complete in its current form, but, well, eventually it will be. Now, the enemy does have two of those Dune Diver catapults on the field, and they are certainly going to be a threat to us, especially to our weak and low on leadership trolls. In fact, Dune Diver catapults of uh, goblin crews. An artillery goblin crew has considerably more uh, leadership than a troll unit does, so certainly something that should concern us at the time. Anyway, you know, we did drop that uh, piercing bolts of burning, or uh, fires of chaos rather, upon the enemy blob, but alas, it was not enough to get them down to about half HP. I think we got them to like 55%, or something along those lines. Unfortunate for us, which means, as it means, we'll take hits, but we've got a mage to cast more spells, and that should bring them down enough to get those chaos spawn on the field. They'll force the one to rout and then head into the second one, while the rest of our forces and begin their fight. Now, our giants led this time around. I think it worked quite well. They got hit with a few shots from the enemy gobbles, but they have 10% physical resistance and 65% missile. And this before the missile resistance upgrade that we are going to be working on soon as we can. So they're certainly not vulnerable to it. And we can have the uh, Mutilith Vortex Beasts mince some massive piles of infantry with their AoE effects, while the Giants focus on single targets and hopefully prevent the uh, Vortex Beasts from going down. It is a lot of orcs, though. There's a lot of uh, biggins and uh, black orcs in there, so that's a lot of armor piercing. The uh, black orcs hit really hard with those great axes. 105 weapon strength. In fact, they hit harder than most of our chosen and are almost on par, I think, with aspiring champions. I gotta double check, but uh, yeah, they're hitting real hard. Alright, unfortunately for them, while that is a big old blob of orcs, they are blobbing up not so nicely for themselves, as we'll be able to cast both the Fires of Chaos and our own spells upon them. Plus, of course, the big old AoE effects from our big old monsters. This is the monstrous army, after all. 
and damn well will they prove it. And that said, uh, we also are doing fairly decently with our Chaos Trolls, who have not routed in this particular battle, though we did take a little bit of damage in the hands of Decay, trying to peel them away from these units here. Oh, though they do match uh, nicely with this uh, swampy, disgusting water, though. This, I guess, is the appropriate place for the uh, Nurgle-blessed Hounds of Pestilence to fight. And probably to some degree the Manticores as well, who are all landed here to help those... Uh, uh, to help those Hounds. Hang on, some great shots in this battle. Glorious little melee around here. And let's see, some Savage Orc Boar Boy Biggins are moving back into the fray, but it looks like the rest of the enemy army has been destroyed. The Death Star formation more or less worked out here. We did a sort of start the battle with two separate smaller Death Stars, but eventually sort of compiled or consolidated into a single force, as it seemed that it would be the better way, especially to keep everybody more or less healed up around our single uh, Chaos War Shrine of Nurgle. Now we got a lot of chasing to do as this army will survive it and does need to be destroyed as it is a buffed uh, uh, free endgame army but the rest of that off screen All right, that one worked out pretty darn well in my opinion. Obviously, we can't heal ourselves like other factions can, so I guess we'll kill the captives as we'll want to auto-resolve the remnants of this army if we can, in fact, catch it as it did run fairly far. And by the looks of it, we cannot. And I guess another question is, do we even want to? Wurzag is right there, and there are lots and lots of armies nearby. Though this army does need to be destroyed because we do want to get rid of those self-sufficient forces. There is that as well to consider. But we can't catch him right now. Uh, you're in Plaguenated yourself with the Skaven Plague. You could sit in Baragdawa's bag, or you could try an ambush. You know what? Ambush around Beric Dawa's bag. I don't know whether that'll make these guys run or maybe that'll push uh, uh, Wurzag to Beric Var again. Hmm, hard to say. You know what? Maybe it would even be better to not ambush. You know what? Stay in regular stance. It might prompt Wurzag to attack you directly rather than the alternative. And ah, uh, Skybrand's still running around. Yeah, we still gotta reward him for taking Black Crag, which was unexpected. As, frankly, vassals are pretty disappointing in general. Like, we gave all of this territory to so many vassals, but they were... We give lots of territory to lots of vassals, but basically none of the territory given to them by us was leveled in any way. They just keep it a tier one. They don't develop it. The AI makes massive amounts of money that they don't use on really anything, which is kind of bizarre. Uh, I really don't understand this uh, design direction from the devs to make your vassals just do absolutely nothing. And I feel like vassals have actually become worse uh, over time because I remember in my Valkia campaign, the vassals were actually doing stuff. They were sending armies around, conquering things, and uh, winning in certain places. Our vassals are just trash. <laughs> I did, granted, I don't remember whether our vassals in Valkia were uh, actually, you know, developing the territories, but they're clearly not developing anything here. And that includes the older uh, vassals, which we've also given them tons and tons of territory. All at tier one. Nonsensical. But oh well, I mean, it's not like we really need, or at all, need our vassals to help us. It's, it's the principle of the thing. It would be nice to get a massive pile of vassals and be able to sit back and relax and see how they do at conquering stuff and only help where, uh, where needed. If anything, uh, the devs should add some kind of toggle for this behavior, like crappy vassals versus decent vassals. <laughs> but anyway, uh, doesn't interfere with our ability to have glorious battles for ourselves. End the turn and proceed. We gotta take that altar of facades next turn and, well, get another new vessel. And Scarby, you're actually gonna walk back to Black Crack. I just... And I do mean walk back because he can't fly. I... <laughs> but I'm being mean. Uh, and, yeah, and I just praised you, man. And A... Uh, does this mean Rakarth is actually going to take this place? Is he doing a thing, perhaps? 
And yes, he is. All right. Well, I mean, we did tell him to do it, so... There's that, and hey, it looks like Norvegacust will indeed immediately get attacked by King Pentu and King Sinoct. Can't quite tell whether these guys are in march stance or not to uh, have reached us, but we do have another battle on our hands. Our first ascension and our first battle. We don't have a lot of time since, uh, uh yeah, but uh, I definitely want to fight this. Go. Yeah. Oh, they attack this guy first a game. Rude. Smart, though. Smart of the AI because it doesn't allow our soul grinders or our play claws to immediately get on the field. Yeah. Alrighty, here we go. The Demon Prince, our first, is here at last. Well, I guess we're not counting Velikor, but I guess a lot of people don't count Velikor. <laughs> oh, I feel slightly bad. Uh, but anyway, anyway, excited to see how we perform here, and this is going to be a toughie. It most definitely is. So we are deploying essentially right beside the enemy army, and another enemy army is deploying right beside us as well, which means we will not be able to leverage our catapults or the massive power of the uh, uh, soul grinders of Nurgle at range, and possibly not even the rattling guns. This is a bad a very very bad position and we're gonna take range shots from a lot of stuff and just as we get on to the map why did i do this i just thought it would be fun and we uh, we had the deployment here we could have moved it all the way to the other side or something like that but eh. I feel like this will be a very nice challenge for this army, as it is not the kind of fight that it really wants to fight. Ooh, it looks like we're starting to take uh, damage from the uh, Bone Giant, though firing at the Exalted Hero is perhaps not the best decision. Norvegicus will land and begin to lay into those piles of Necropolis Knights. I was about to say with his mace, but he hasn't had the uh, chance to do that yet. Alright, Blanc, come away. There we go, that's a big old bonk, though I think you might have missed those Necropolis Knights and uh, uh, hit the uh, hit the Tomb Guard beside them as well. And ooh, we're starting to take, to take shots from an enemy unit of Sepulchral Stalkers, which we might normally try to engage so that they don't get those shotgun blasts off. Uh, but this time around, we're stuck. We're stuck where we are in a bad position and we just have to fight this in melee. In fact, all of our soul grinders are moving into melee as well as they've no choice but to do it in such a manner. Trying to get a few of our rattling guns shooting that bone giant, dropping at about 15% HP, but it's going to take a while of them doing that. And they are under fire by the looks of it, or at least will be by various skeleton archers who are able to fire also similarly with impunity at the current time. Uh, we're also starting to take uh, counter fire from enemy screaming skull catapult as our own play claws are down to about half HP and we do have to watch out for their leadership while one of our units of uh, soul grinders, the Zomborg, has been very heavily damaged and almost started to uh, to melt away and thus we backed it up behind the enemy line it can't heal here unfortunately but it can act either as an artillery piece or as a supporting unit and melee for our uh, uh, for our pestilent doggos which are attempting to combat the enemy necropolis knights and prevent them from charging through our lines unfortunately as more enemy units arrive on the field we get completely surrounded that is way too many units our rattling guns are done and are going to route off the Field. I think the other rattling gun is in pretty bad shape as well. First of our plague claw catapults has escaped, and it looks like the second one is very much in danger as Necropolis Knights and Chariots are moving in. Now, this is starting to look a little bit dicey. Over here, however, we had Norvegicus to go for that bone giant. Can't leave the damn thing to con Oh, that was a nice shot, though. Uh, can't leave the damn thing to continue firing at us. And a few bonks should bring it down. It was already damaged at least slightly by the uh, rattling guns before they got charged. And it's not strong enough in melee to fight here. There we go, and the construct will collapse and Norvegicust will have to head towards that screaming skull catapult, which similarly to the enemy range units has been firing at us with impunity this whole time. A look at those Chaos Warriors holding very heroically as they are surrounded and getting hit in from every direction. 
And damn, especially this particular unit that was on the uh, rightmost flank that got completely separated from everybody else. But hey, everybody in our army is surrounded at this point. This is a, uh, well, at least a partial, I'd say primarily a ranged focused army. So it continues to be dicey. I believe all the rats are off the field now. And they've all fled, and I think one of our Chaos Warriors might have fled or is about to. I think this one will be uh, will be running by the looks of it shortly. Also, one of our uh, Pestilent Doggos, the Sick of the Litter in particular, got trapped out here rather than uh, being able to run around in the background fighting knights. Though at least it got trapped right below a Chaos Shrine or War Shrine of Nurgle, as the between the regeneration of the Doggos themselves and the uh, War Shrine and their physical resistance, they're still looking pretty okay here. Plus, this is the biggest blob of enemies, and this is where we concentrate our miasma of pestilences and our soul blight casting to reduce the enemy effectiveness and allow the sick of the litter to continue their work. There is that, uh, pestilence, as I was saying. Uh, Bounce of Power remains in the enemy's favor, and it looks like having taken out that unit of artillery, uh, our demon prince is now working on those uh, who shopped you with great bow, and quite effectively, I might add. Looks like he's able to knock uh, about at least one of them out with every blow. And the casts continue to move in. Gotta keep him casting and applying that Children of Nurgle passive to keep everybody healed up. Or at least as healed up as we can get, because I imagine we'll be reaching our healing caps sooner rather than later. There we go, loving those animations, and it looks like the Ushabti with Great Bow are crumbling away now. Norvegicus has personally taken care of now pretty much all the enemy range units because normally uh, we'd be able to destroy them with our artillery and attack them with our doggos, uh, but all of those units were either engaged in melee or, uh, well, actually, yeah, all of those units were engaged in melee and unable to do their job. And our only flying unit was our uh, the lord, so it had to be him. All right, Soul Grinders still fighting, still in reasonably good shape over here, though this one is pretty heavily damaged. One of our Chaos Warriors of Nurgle, the Bog Walkers, are broken and attempting to route, and it looks like the Trench Foot are a looking to route as well. Bog Walkers appear to be very close to the edge of the map as well, so it does look like they're out of here. On the bright side, with the enemy range destroyed, they no longer have range support, and will hopefully thus not be able to focus down certain units, as well as Norvegicus is now in the fray. I do like the uh, sort of difference in uh, units that we got here. The enemy has lots and lots of their smaller infantry while we have the towering monstrosities above them. Norvegicus is also now hunting the enemy lords. I believe there are two of them in this formation. One's on the Cambrian War Sphinx and one's either on a chariot or on a mount. Somewhere in there. Though frankly it's a little bit hard to spot. And ooh, nice hit from that Cambrian War Sphinx. But the Tarnished Legion is still looking pretty okay. And I think this is also because, like the Sick of the Litter, the Tarnished Legion spent most of the battle uh, below the Unclean Zealot. Ooh, wow, our Exalted Hero of Nurgle nearly routed. That would have been bad. That would have been very bad. Losing access to all the healing and uh, and support from that. Yeah, down to two units of Chaos Warriors now, but the balance of power has shifted, I think, I would say very, very slightly in our favor. It's close to 50-50, maybe 52-48, or something along those lines. The enemies are still fighting plenty of chariots, plenty of other monstrous things around, tons and tons of Tomb Guard. And it looks like the Bog Walkers are still trying to book it on out of there. Oh, there's that other Tomb King on that chariot here. Trying to focus him down with Norvegicus as it would be too much HP to work through the Cambrian War Sphinx at first. We are, however, very much winning on the flanks as the Doggos have finally gotten rid of most of the Necropolis Knights that they were fighting with a little bit of help from the Lords of Silence. Uh, the uh, Lords of Silence Chaos Warriors here. And they will hopefully rejoin the fray sooner rather than later. All right, another cast coming down, another miasma of pestilence upon the enemy. And damn, what a good fight. And this is why sometimes you just got to take battles in such a way that uh, the enemy gets the, uh, the advantage against your army. Especially in the late game like this.
All right, enemy is definitely starting to run out of units now. In fact, it is starting to run out of morale as well, and perhaps uh, defeating that Cambrian War Sphinx outright won't actually be necessary. And just a matter of attrition now, as the enemy all will crumble soon, as long as we don't lose any further units. Well, I mean, not as long as, just we shouldn't lose any further units. And just gotta keep everybody healing. There we go, Soul Grinders. Obviously, they probably won't have done nearly as much damage. Yeah, 13k, not too bad, but certainly not the kind of damage that they normally deal in these battles when they're actually able to uh, leverage their range capabilities. Ooh, nice jump from Norvegicus as well, taking a couple of last shots at that Tomb King on Camrian War Sphinx. Honestly, there's so many monstrous things around, it's kind of difficult to keep the camera centered and the uh, spot. It's just what the heck is going on. I'm just surprised at how long this guy's been holding. Damn. I mean, he's got 13k HP. He's got more HP than our Demon Prince does. Heck of a construct. And I mean, now that most of its minions are dead, like... Half of our units are trying to hit this damn Cambrian War Sphinx, and it just won't go down. Alright, come on, drop down on that thing, and there we go, Norvegicus delivers the final blow, though the game doesn't like to uh, show that. That's alright. Great job. You get pets for this. Oh, all right, there we go, and it just goes to show that just because you've ascended to demon princehood uh, doesn't mean that your trials are over, Norvegicus. You're still going to have to uh, put in a work throughout the rest of the campaign, and by the looks of it. Plus... We got ourselves a good battle, though both or all four of our rat units pretty much immediately abandoned us. Or at the very least didn't uh, do all that much. 4k, 9k, 2k, and no damage whatsoever from them. Uh, our soul grind, well, most of our units had no choice but to stay on the field. 90,000 damage on the sick of the litter. 90, I don't think I have ever ever seen a uh, uh, well certainly a doggo unit get that much damage or anything close to it that's insane it, more than twice as much as the demon prince way more than any of the uh, soul grinders and this unit this sick of the litter unit it was right in the middle of the fight as in uh, these three were running around in the background killing off enemy uh, uh, skeleton archers and stuff this one actually reached its healing cap because it was fighting right below the unclean zealot war shrine which is kind of interesting perhaps with the sheer amount of buffs that we have we can actually use these guys as uh, something of a line in infantry to a degree if we wanted to at the very least against non-demonic foes due to their uh, physical resistance because two of our units of uh, chaos warriors of nurgle routed off field whereas these guys right in the middle of the biggest portion of the fight never did sick of the litter i am very impressed with you i'm very impressed indeed all right. Well, happy with the results either way, we are going to continue killing off those captives because the trials of a Norvegicus continue. Uh, Thoric Ironbrow probably wants peace, and if we don't peace out, he'll probably move this way. We don't really have enough armies down here to deal with everything. Might need to raise a temp army. Hopefully once we delete another one of our temp armies, because I don't want to start losing like 30,000 gold per turn as uh, even... Even for us, it might become unsustainable. Abyssa, you want a peace, but you will not vassalize, so we will vassalize you next turn instead. Sarah will reclaim Mistenar? Oh, I thought you were besieged. Oh, did we blockade? Oh, no, you moved out of the... Uh, eh, well, whatever. I'll destroy you either way. This was just, uh, There wasn't really any point to doing this. I was hoping she would sally out and attack our army, but, uh, well, your choice. Your choice. Anyway, with that, enchanted shield, blah, 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 scroll of power, bunch of stuff that we don't need, and, hey, Croc Car's running around. Or floating around, I guess. Uh, with that, folks, we are once more out of time, and I am going to call this episode here.
All right, settlement besiege, settlement second. Hey, Festus is up and running. I guess next time we will be trying Festus out. Okay, a bunch of plagues everywhere. In addition to whatever else Norvega can stand, well, I guess everybody uh, continues to get up to. Still work to do in this campaign. Certainly still works to slay. And uh, Wurzag is... Ooh, are you close enough? Huh. Might force a fight between Wurzag himself and a Nerath Magoth's army. Hmm. Certainly some nice potential there, though that'll probably be a lot tougher than it was against the other army. And on top of that, we have another army nearby. Village is close, but not close enough to help an... Ooh. Astragruel Iron Pick. Your reinforcing Cobgob forces are nearby. Interesting. We got some interesting stuff ahead. A uh, nice little uh, combined arms battle. Should be a good time. But anyway, we'll have to wait till next time, so stay tuned. Don't forget to leave those likes and comments for the algorithm down below. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.